I have two bushcraft knives that I want to share with you today. First the Ember and then the Nordico. Both of these are from the Spanish company Joker. If you're interested in hearing my thoughts on them, keep watching. So I'd like to thank Joker for sending me these two knives so that I can share them with you. So what we'll do is I'll focus in on each of these knives. I'll give you good close-up looks of both of them. I'll talk about what is similar between each knife. I'll talk about the differences between the two. And then of course, we're gonna be doing some testing. All right, as I mentioned, I will focus in on both of these knives for the moment to show you what they have in common. And then I'll focus in on each knife individually to show you its unique features. So to begin, as I mentioned, both of these knives are made by Joker of Spain. And they, Joker has a long time history for making high quality knives. And uh, this is a good example of that. Both of these knives are using the same steel, 3.7 millimeter stock, 14C, 28 and stainless steel, a good medium of the road uh, quality stainless steel, very well suited to bushcraft purposes. They both have spear point shapes. You'll notice that the ember has less of a clip on it, but they both have essentially the same shape and very close to the same blade length, but the ember is a bit longer. I'll show you that in a minute. They both have wood handles held on by two brass pins and a brass lanyard loop, as you can see on these. Of course, they do have different woods. I'll talk about that. And both have black liners inside. And uh, when I show you the knives individually, I'll show you the sheaves on them as well. Okay, let's focus in first on the ember. All right, I put the ember back in its sheath so you could see that. Nice quality leather sheath. It's not super well fitted. It's a bit of a generic sheath, but the quality of construction and the leather itself are very high. Uh, it, this one, the ember, comes with an, uh, an included ferrocerium rod, which has a matching walnut uh, grip on it and an elastic to hold it in place. Nice feature there. You can see the quality of the stitching, the burnishing down the edge, yeah, just very well made. It has a removable dangler loop on it, held on with dome snaps. And if you don't like using that, it has a regular belt loop as well. I will be talking about the sheaths these knives come with in a moment, because there is one specific thing I want to point out about it, but let's focus in on the knife. So let's have a few stats for the ember. So to start with, the overall length of this knife is 8.75 inches, which is 22.5 centimeters. The blade length is 4.13 inches, which is 10.5 centimeters. The blade width from spine to edge is 1.1 inches or 2.8 centimeters. And as I mentioned, it has 3.7 millimeter, millimeter thick stock, which is 0.14 of an inch. The weight of the knife without the sheath is six ounces exactly, which is 170 grams. And if you add the sheath in, it bumps it up to 10.6 ounces or 297 grams. Walnut handles, very nicely shaped. The other unique feature of this knife is the fact that it has a protruding pommel on it. And while I'm personally not a fan of protruding pommels, I can see where they do have a place. Now, first I'll say, tell you the reason why I don't particularly like them for myself, and that is because with my knives, especially if I'm going to be drilling, I like to have a rounded pommel here because that's what's coming in contact with the palm of my hand. And I just find that a little bit uncomfortable. But I did some testing with it and it's not overly so, so I can live with it. Especially since I really do like the shape of these grips. A uh, little bit better than I really expected, to be honest, for a couple of reasons. First off, they are a bit longer than the uh, Nordico, as you'll see in a moment, and wider. They're actually fairly wide for a knife of this size. Now, I have a double XL hand, so this is still a little bit small. You can see how my hand pretty much swallows the entire grip, but it is more comfortable, this one, holding it like this than the other knife. Now, don't get me wrong, the other knife is still very comfortable, but it's just a little bit more comfort on this for somebody with larger hands. I expect this knife will fit almost everybody's hands right up to a large. XL or double XL, maybe, well, you know, you know, you'll have to try one out, but it's working for me, if just a tiny bit small. Okay, so what else can I say about the knife? It does have a sharpened spine, which will throw sparks quite readily off of the ferrocerium rod. 
I've had sharp response, but this is fully functional. And if you really feel the need, you can always uh, give it a little bit of a burnishing and uh, get it a little bit sharper again. So you can see it is starting to get dirty with use. So yeah, okay, let's bring in the other knife into the picture. All right, so here is the Nordical in its leather sheath as I received it. And I say that for a reason, because I want to talk about the sheath in a moment. Very, virtually identical to the one the Ember came in, maybe a little bit different color. And of course, this doesn't have the included ferrocerium rod. Again, it has the removable dangler held on by dome snaps, as well as a regular belt loop here. The knife rides nice and deep in the sheath. It's a generic shaped sheath, so it will take the shape and form of your knife the more you use it, and it has been doing that. Very high quality. Now, one thing I didn't mention, as you can see, there are hollow rivets down the side. They, each, both of these knives came with a length of paracord with them. Uh, I don't know, maybe you could put a lanyard on the end of it, not something I'm interested in doing, or maybe you could run it through these two loops at the bottom to hold it against the side of your leg, if that's your style or way you like to carry it. Again, not something I'd be interested in doing. I'll come back to this sheath in a moment. All right, let's bring the knife out and have a closer look. Quick rundown on the specifications. The overall length of the Nordical is 8.75 inches, which is 22.5 centimeters. The blade, 3.93 inches, or 10 centimeters exactly, so it's just a little bit shorter than the ember. Blade width from spine to edge is 1.06 inches, which is 2.7 centimeters. So you can see not quite as tall in the blade, but so close you won't be able to see it side by side even. Blade thickness once again is 3.7 millimeters or 0.0 or 0.14 inches. The weight of this knife interestingly is a slight bit heavier at 6.2 ounces or 177 grams but only 9.9 .9 ounces uh, or 281 grams with the sheath. Now, re that reason, of course, for that is that the other knife did come with the ferrocerium rod, which added a bit of weight to it. Really, really nice curly birch handles. Very select. Uh, they were so nice when I first looked at it, I thought it was bird's eye. It's not bird's eye, but it is a really nice. Let's see if I can give you some close-ups on the curly birch. Now, I really thought this was going to be the favor of my two of these two knives, but uh, it's still a really nice knife. But to be honest, I am liking the Ember a little bit better. Reason I thought I was going to like this, it has a more traditional handle shape here and is rounded on the pommel and giving me some nice comfort there. Um, it just so happened that the other one is a little bit longer in the grip. Maybe I'll bring that back in so you can see the two of them side by side. Hopefully this will show up. It's just the shape of the grip. Maybe this way is the best way to do it. Hopefully that is showing up. Trying to get them as close to match. You should be able to see that the ember is slightly longer in the grip and that better accommodates my double XL hands. Having said that, once again, nicely thickened in the scale. Only a slight swell through the middle, which matches the palm swell along the top or the bottom right down here. Still a very, very comfortable knife to use. Again, just me, I'd like it a little bit bigger, but I think 99% of the people who pick up this knife will think it's just spot on perfect for them. So again, a lot to use. Also, I've been using this knife quite a bit, and as you'll see in a moment, it is very, very capable as a performer. Now, I mentioned the sheath, and this is important. At least I feel it's important to show you this. So this is the knife I started carrying first during my testing phase, and this is the original sheath that came with it. So one day I was out in the woods and I took my backpack off and a few moments later I realized I didn't have the knife on my belt. And I looked around and it was laying on the ground right there. And what I determined happened is, is as my backpack came off, the hip belt grabbed, you remember it'd be on my belt like this, grabbed the sheath and actually broke the rivet right off through it. So I was able to fix it. However, before I did so, I reached out to uh, Joker Knives and to their credit, they sent me a replacement sheath identical to the first one. Now I'm going to give you a close up of the rivet that came on the original sheath and uh, you'll see why I had some concerns about it. So hopefully this will show up here on camera. It is kind of hard to show. I'm trying to bend it out of the way. There we go. Hopefully that's showing up. There's a tiny rivet right here that goes through to the inside of the sheath right here. And 
it's not especially strong. Now, if it's now, it could be just a one of. I mean, that can happen, right? It could be that the rivet wasn't properly set when it was made. Uh, who knows? But I think that is a potential weak point on the sheath. So I'm, I'm not quite sure if, uh, if I'll have problems with the other one. I haven't had problems yet with the ember. And, you know, I'm also much more conscious of it now as well when I take my backpack off. But as I mentioned, uh, Joker was very quick to send this out to replace the original sheath. All right, having gone over the specifications for each of these two knives and giving you some close-ups of each of them, I think it's time to do a little bit of demonstrations. All right, I have a couple of pieces. This one pine, this one I believe an old piece of maple. We'll see in a moment when I split it. And uh, all I'm going to do is just split this out, uh, do a little bit of notching, doing a little bit of feather sticking with it. Since I have the two knives and they're virtually identical in almost every way, I'll split the tasks up between the two of them so you can see that they, uh, or see them both in action. So let's start. I'm going to use the ember to split the piece of wood. Now, this piece of wood is inch and a half, yeah, inch and a half at the most. So it's not a huge piece of wood, but it's well within the wheelhouse of what this knife can split quite easily with that thick stock. Trying to stop short of coming right down to the ground. A little bit, ooh, still a little bit damp inside, that's interesting. It was laying on the ground, so I assumed it was dead. It is dead. And it's a bit old, as you can see. All right, let's split the other one. Uh, that split a bit, keen, a bit uh, smoother or cleaner. Uh, I think I should be able to do a little bit of feather sticking with this. And the wood is a little older than I first anticipated, so it is soft enough, but it's also somewhat fragile, so it's not getting the curls. Let's go really light. If I go really light down the ridges, then I'm getting some finer curls in here. So as you can see, the knife has no problem doing the curling or doing the work. Just go down a little smoother. Yeah, there we go. All right, well, there's that. Some feather sticking, not the finest curls in the world, but you can see the knife is certainly capable of it. Let's see what we can do as far as creating maybe a tent peg, the other task you're going to be looking for in your knife. I'll need something a little bit better. Where's the other piece? All right, that's not too bad a looking piece. I think I'll use another piece of wood as an anvil. And now I'm switching over to the Nordico. So what I'm doing now is just creating a, an L7 notch, which is very much exactly what you want on a tent peg. and just curve into that. Notch that I created. So why is handle grip so important? Why do we care if a knife has a good grip on it? Well, you can make just about any knife work for you in the short term. It's when you're doing extended work that uh, you'll find that your hand will either get very tired or you won't have the control that you want for the knife. So that's why you want to find a grip that fits your hand fully in your hand and gives you all the control and doesn't tire you out. I think normally I would use a reverse grip chest lever grip to do this but rather than change positions you can see the knife is still pointing that very well. And then the last thing might be to chamfer the top. Quick, simple, little tent peg. So 
These are just two of the knives that Joker has available on their website. They have a wide range of knives, knives that range from bushcraft to hunting, to survival, to some, uh, well, just very different designs. Some of them very reminiscent of older designs, things that might catch your fancy. They have such a wide range of handle materials and liner combinations and sheaths for their knives that uh, I think you'll find something at least that you're interested in. Now, where do these fit in terms of affordability? So I'm not going to say that these are the cheapest knives out there. You can buy a much less expensive knife, but I'm not so sure you can find one at this price point with this quality. So for that reason, I refer to these as a high value knife. Again, you can buy less expensive knives. You can pay a lot more for a knife. And I don't know that you'll do a lot better. So one of the things that I plan on doing in the near future is to compare especially the Ember, I think, because I think it's the one that is closest in size, to the Mora Gerberg. And that's the one that we uh, tend to hold up right now as a an ideal factory production bushcraft knife. And don't get me wrong, I now have one and I've been testing it. Thankfully, uh, a friend of mine uh, uh, sent it to me. So uh, I do appreciate that. I'll talk more about that when I review that knife. So I have that knife that I compare the two of them against, against each other. So the reason I say this knife against the Mora, of course, is because of the extended pommel and size. The reason why I'll compare the two of them is they're both made of the same steel. They're both roughly the same shape. They're both full tang, although the Garberg does have a hidden tang, it's still full tang. They both have a protruding pommel. Uh, that's where the comparisons end. After that, this one has the much nicer looking, at least, walnut handles, whereas the Garberg has the plastic handles on it. But I think the reason that you'll be interested in seeing that comparison is because these are cheaper. At least here in Canada, these are a much less expensive knife than the Garberg. The Garberg, it just seems to be so expensive. And, and I know people say, well, it's worth every penny. I'm not gonna argue that because it's a nice knife. It's just that, same steel, same size, same basic shape, and less expensive, in my mind, better looking. Okay, so these are just two knives, as I mentioned, that Joker has available. Take a look at their website, and you will see a great lineup of knives. It, it actually takes a while to go through page after page to see everything they have to offer. I don't know if I'll have more to share with you in the future, but if I have the opportunity, I'm gonna jump on it because I really think these are some of the best knives for the money. Again, not the cheapest knives, not that expensive, but not the cheapest knives, but the best value for your money that is on the market today. Okay, I will put all the information and specifications for these two knives, the Ember and the Nordical, in the video description below, as well as the links to the website so you can take a closer look at them. I've noted that there is a company in Canada selling these knives, Bushcraft Canada. I'll put links to that as well. I don't know where the best place to purchase them in the U.S. would be, but at least I can give you the Canadian link. If you have any questions, or comments on either of these knives or if you have other of the uh, Joker lineup let me know about them and uh, if you have any recommendations let me know about those as well. All right until next time get out and explore and take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.